The garden was my sanctuary, my escape from the harsh realities that plagued our family. With each seedling I nurtured, I found solace in the idea that something beautiful could still bloom amidst the chaos. Why are you always in the garden, Emily? Trying to dig up your real dad? Leah's words cut through the tranquility like a knife, her sneering voice dripping with venom. I clenched my fists, the soil clinging to my fingers like a reassuring embrace. Shut up, Leah. At least I know where I belong. Her laughter echoed through the garden, mocking my attempt at finding peace. Leah had always been a thorn in my side, her mere presence a constant reminder of the fractures within our family. As we stood in the lush garden of our new home, the tension between us was palpable. My mother had hoped this move would bring us closer, but Leah's vindictive nature seemed to only worsen with each passing day. I turned my attention back to the delicate seedlings, carefully tending to them as Leah's footsteps faded into the distance but her malice lingered like a dark cloud looming over my sanctuary. Days later, I discovered the cruel reality of her contempt. My precious plants, once vibrant and full of promise, lay wilted and trampled. Leah's handiwork, no doubt, a twisted act of sabotage against the one thing that brought me joy. When my mother confronted us, Leah's crocodile tears flowed freely, her lies as smooth as silk. And as always, I bore the brunt of the punishment, forced to clean up the mess while Leah basked in her triumph. As I knelt in the garden, replanting the seedlings with trembling hands, a newfound determination took root within me. Leah might think she had won this battle, but the war had just begun. The garden incident was merely the beginning of Leah's relentless campaign to make my life miserable. As we entered high school, our paths diverged even further— with me focusing on academics while Leah gained a reputation for trouble. It was during our junior year that tensions reached a boiling point. Mrs. Wilkins, our strict English teacher, had left a stack of exam papers unattended on her desk. The next day, the entire class was in an uproar. Someone had stolen the exams, and the culprit was nowhere to be found. As I walked down the hallway, whispers and accusing glances followed me like a dark cloud, Leah, ever the opportunist, seized the moment to strike. Well, well, if it isn't Little Miss Perfect, she sneered, her cronies snickering behind her. Couldn't resist the temptation, could you? I opened my mouth to protest, but she cut me off with a wave of her hand. Save it, Emily. We all know you're the one who took the exams. You've always been a cheater, just like your deadbeat dad. Her words stung like a thousand needles, and I felt the weight of everyone's eyes upon me. Before I could defend myself, Mrs. Wilkins appeared, her face contorted with fury. "'Miss Harper, come with me. We have a lot to discuss.' Leah's smug grin burned into my memory as I was dragged away, my protests falling on deaf ears. No matter how much I pleaded my innocence, the evidence was damning. The stolen exams had been found in my locker, no doubt planted there by Leah's scheming hands. The punishment was swift and severe. Suspension— academic probation, and a permanent mark on my record. As I sat alone in the principal's office, the weight of Leah's betrayal crushed me like a ton of bricks. At home, the situation was no better. My mother, always the peacekeeper, tried to remain neutral, but my stepfather's loyalty to Leah was unwavering. I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding, my mother said, her voice wavering with uncertainty. Don't be naive, Marie, my stepfather scoffed. Emily has always been jealous of Leah's popularity. This was bound to happen eventually. As they argued, Leah lounged on the couch, her eyes gleaming with triumph. She caught my gaze and mouthed the words that would forever haunt me. Enjoy being a nobody, Emily. You deserve it. In that moment, a fire ignited within me, a burning desire to prove her wrong, to show her that I was more than just a shadow in her wake. I'll show you what it means to truly matter, I whispered my hands balled into fists. Leah's laughter echoed through the room, but I didn't care. From that day forward, I vowed to rise above her petty games and carve my own path, no matter what obstacles she threw my way. Graduation couldn't come soon enough. As I walked across that stage, diploma in hand, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. I was finally free from the toxic environment that had plagued me for years, free from Leah's constant torment and manipulation. With a sense of determination, I packed my bags and set out for a new city, ready to start a fresh chapter. No more living in the shadows, no more letting Leah dictate my worth. 
This was my chance to truly bloom. I found a small apartment in the heart of the city, its walls adorned with vibrant murals and the streets lined with lush greenery. It was here that my passion for urban gardening took root, a passion that had been ignited by those precious moments in the garden, away from Leah's poisonous influence. I spent countless hours researching and planning, determined to bring a little bit of nature's beauty to the concrete jungle. My vision? An urban oasis, a sanctuary where people could escape the hustle and bustle and connect with the earth. It wasn't long before my dream began to take shape. With the help of a few like-minded individuals, we transformed an abandoned lot into a verdant paradise filled with lush vegetation and winding pathways. As the garden flourished, so did I. Each, each seedling I planted, each flower that bloomed, was a testament to my resilience, a reminder that I could create something beautiful out of even the most barren of landscapes. It was during one of my daily visits to the garden that I met Lucas, a kind-hearted neighbor who shared my passion for green spaces. From the moment we locked eyes, there was an instant connection, a spark that ignited something within me. This place is incredible, he said, his eyes wide with wonder as he took in the vibrant colors and lush foliage. You've done an amazing job. I couldn't help but blush at his praise, feeling a warmth spread through my chest that had nothing to do with the summer sun. It's a work in progress, I replied, trying to play it cool. But I have big plans for this place. From that day on, Lucas became a constant presence in my life, offering a helping hand and a listening ear whenever I needed it. With his support, my urban garden continued to thrive, drawing attention from community leaders and local organizations. For the first time in my life, I felt truly seen, valued for my hard work and dedication, rather than judged by the shadows of my past. As I stood amidst the lush greenery, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. This was my fresh start, my chance to bloom and grow without the weight of Leah's toxic presence holding me back. Little did I know, the shadows of my past were about to come crashing back into my life, threatening to uproot everything I had worked so hard to build. The urban garden was thriving, a true oasis in the heart of the city. With each passing day, more and more people flocked to our little slice of nature, eager to escape the concrete jungle and bask in the beauty of the lush greenery. It was during one of our community events that I first noticed the well-dressed figures mingling among the crowd, their eyes appraising the garden with a mixture of admiration and calculation. Little did I know, these were the first signs of trouble brewing on the horizon. As the garden's popularity grew, so did the attention from powerful community figures and local developers. It seemed everyone wanted a piece of our little paradise, each with their own agenda and ulterior motives. It was during this time that Leah resurfaced, like a shadow from my past come to haunt me once again. Emily, is that really you? Her voice was sickly sweet, dripping with false sincerity. I turned, and there she was, looking almost unrecognizable with her perfectly coiffed hair and designer outfit. But those eyes, those cold, calculating eyes, were unmistakable. Leah, I said, my voice guarded. What are you doing here? Can't a sister come and support her family? She replied, her lips curling into a saccharine smile. I've heard so much about your little garden project, and I have to say, I'm impressed. I couldn't help but scoff at her words, memories of her past cruelties flooding back to me. Cut the act, Leah. We both know you're not here out of the goodness of your heart. Her mask slipped for a moment, flicker of annoyance crossing her features before she regained her composure. You're right, I'm not here just to admire the scenery, she admitted, taking a step closer. I want in. I laughed in her face, the absurdity of her request too much to bear. You? Help me? After everything you've done? I've changed, Emily, she insisted, her voice taking on a pleading tone. I'm sorry for everything, Em. Let's put the past behind us and make something beautiful together. Against my better judgment, a part of me wanted to believe her. Perhaps she had truly turned over a new leaf, leaving her toxic ways behind. Or perhaps this was just another one of her twisted games— a new way to worm her way into my life and tear me down from the inside. But then I thought of Lucas, of the unwavering support he had shown me, and I knew I couldn't risk it all on Leah's empty promises. Fine, I said, stealing my resolve. But I'll be watching you every step of the way, 
One wrong move, and you're out. Leah's face lit up with a triumphant grin, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I had just made a grave mistake. You won't regret this, Em, she said, her voice dripping with false sincerity. Together, we're going to make this garden the envy of the city. As she sauntered away, I couldn't help but wonder if I had just opened the door for Leah to wreak havoc on my life once again. But this time, I vowed I wouldn't be caught off guard. This time, I would be ready for whatever she had planned. With the garden in full bloom, it was time to showcase our hard work to the entire community. I had been planning a grand harvest festival, a celebration of nature's bounty and the urban oasis we had created together. Leah, true to her word, had been helping with the preparations, her enthusiasm almost convincing. Almost. This is going to be amazing, M. She gushed, her perfectly manicured nails gesturing at the decorations we had spent hours assembling. The whole city is going to be talking about this festival for years to come. I forced a smile, trying my best to push aside the nagging doubts that plagued me whenever she was around. Let's just hope everything goes according to plan, I replied, my eyes scanning the garden for any sign of trouble. Leah must have noticed my skepticism, because she immediately moved closer, her hand resting on my arm in a gesture of false reassurance. Hey, don't worry so much, she said, her voice dripping with saccharine sweetness. I've got your back, remember? We're in this together. I wanted to believe her, to trust that she had truly changed her ways. But the memories of her past betrayals were like a weight around my neck, holding me back from fully letting my guard down. The days leading up to the festival were a whirlwind of activity, with volunteers and vendors flooding the garden to set up their displays and booths, it was during one of these frantic mornings that disaster struck. I arrived at the garden to find a scene of utter chaos. Rare plants had been uprooted, their delicate blooms crushed and scattered across the ground. Equipment had been smashed and valuables were missing from the storage shed. My heart sank as I surveyed the wreckage, the months of hard work and preparation undone in a single night. What happened here? I whispered, my voice barely audible over the din of concerned volunteers. It was then that Leah appeared, her face a mask of concern and sympathy. Emily, I'm so sorry, she said, her arms encircling me in a tight embrace. I just got here myself and saw the mess. Someone must have broken in during the night. I pulled away, my eyes searching her face for any sign of deception. But her expression was flawless, her eyes wide and innocent. This is a disaster, I said, running a hand through my disheveled hair. The festival is in two days. How are we going to recover from this? Leah's grip on my arm tightened, her perfectly painted lips curling into a reassuring smile. Don't worry, Em. I'll help you rebuild everything, I promise. As she spoke those words, a flicker of doubt wormed its way into my mind. Was this just another one of Leah's twisted games, a way to gain my trust only to snatch it away at the last moment? I studied her face, searching for any hint of deception any clue that her supposed concern was nothing more than a carefully crafted lie. But there was nothing, just the same earnest expression she had worn since her return. Against my better judgment, I found myself nodding, accepting her offer of help. After all, what choice did I have? The festival was quickly approaching, and I needed all the support I could get. Little did I know— Leah's involvement was about to unleash a chain of events that would shake the very foundation of everything I had built, exposing the true depths of her duplicity and leaving me to question everything I thought I knew. Despite Leah's reassurances and promises to help rebuild, a nagging suspicion lingered in the back of my mind. Something about the whole situation didn't sit right with me, and I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to her sudden involvement than met the eye. It was then that Lucas approached me with a proposition, a way to uncover the truth once and for all. Emily, I know you're worried about Leah's motives, he said, his voice low and serious. And to be honest, I am too. I nodded, relieved that someone else shared my concerns. So what do you suggest we do? I asked, my heart racing at the prospect of finally exposing Leah's true intentions. Lucas leaned in closer, his eyes darting around to ensure we weren't overheard. We plan a few hidden cameras and recording devices around the garden, he whispered. That way, we can keep an eye on her every move and catch her in the act if she's up to something. The idea made me uneasy at first. 
spying on my own sister felt wrong, like a betrayal of the fragile trust we had begun to rebuild. But then I remembered all the times she had betrayed me, all the pain and anguish she had caused, and my resolve hardened. Let's do it, I said, my voice firm and unwavering. Over the next few days, Lucas and I discreetly set up hidden cameras and microphones throughout the garden, tucking them away in strategic locations where they would be sure to capture Leah's every move. At first, there was nothing out of the ordinary, just Leah diligently working alongside the volunteers, her face a mask of dedication and hard work. But then, one fateful night, the cameras caught something that shattered my world. It was well after dark, and the garden was deserted, save for a solitary figure, moving through the shadows. As the grainy footage played out, my heart sank. It was Leah, and she wasn't alone. The camera zoomed in, capturing her hushed conversation with a sharply dressed woman I didn't recognize. Everything is going according to plan, Leah said, her voice a low hiss. Emily suspects nothing. The woman nodded, her perfectly coiffed hair glinting in the moonlight. Excellent, she replied, her tone all business. Once the garden is out of the way, we can proceed with the mall development project as planned. My blood ran cold as the pieces fell into place. Leah had been working with this woman, a developer, no doubt, to sabotage the garden and clear the way for commercial development. It's just business, Leah said with a shrug. She'll never see it coming. Rage and betrayal coursed through my veins as I watched the footage, the true depths of Leah's duplicity finally laid bare. All this time, she had been playing me for a fool, worming her way into my life only to tear it all down for her own gain. As the two women parted ways, their sinister laughter echoing through the empty garden, I made a vow. Leah would pay for her betrayal, and this time, there would be no more second chances. The next morning, I called an emergency community board meeting, my hands trembling with fury as I gathered the evidence. Leah's lies and manipulation would be exposed for all to see, and she would finally face the consequences of her actions. As the board members filed in, their faces etched with concern, I took a deep breath and steeled my resolve. It was time to bring Leah's reign of terror to an end, once and for all. With the damning footage in hand, Lucas and I devised a plan to finally expose Leah's treachery once and for all. We knew she wouldn't go down without a fight, so we had to be strategic, carefully laying the groundwork to ensure her lies unraveled before the entire community. The first step was to secure the critical public vote that would determine the future of the urban garden. Leah, ever the manipulator, had been working tirelessly to sway the community in her favor, spreading rumors and half-truths about my supposed mismanagement of the project. Emily is in over her head, she would whisper to anyone who would listen. This garden is a sinking ship, and it's time to cut our losses before it drags the entire neighborhood down with it. Her words were like poison, seeping into the minds of those who had once been our staunchest supporters. I could feel the tide turning, the community's faith in me and the garden wavering with each passing day. But Lucas and I had a trump card. The truth. We just needed to find the right moment to play it. That moment came at a crucial community meeting, where the final vote on the garden's future was to take place. Leah was there, of course, her perfectly coiffed hair and designer outfit a stark contrast to the humble surroundings of the community center. As the meeting commenced, she wasted no time in launching her attack, her silver tongue weaving a web of lies and half-truths. "'Friends, neighbors, I come to you today with a heavy heart,' she began, her voice dripping with false concern. "'It pains me to say this, but the Urban Garden Project has become a liability, a drain on our community's resources, and a threat to our safety.' Murmurs rippled through the crowd, and I could see doubt creeping into the faces of those who had once been our most ardent supporters. "'Emily Harper has proven herself incapable of managing this endeavor.' Leah continued, her eyes locking with mine for a brief moment. It's time we cut our losses and explore more profitable options for the land. As she spoke those words, I felt a familiar fire ignite within me, a burning desire to expose her lies and reclaim the truth. It was then that Lucas caught my eye and gave a subtle nod, the signal we had been waiting for. Without a word, I stood and made my way to the front of the room, the damning footage already queued up on the projector screen behind me. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I began, my voice steady and resolute. Before we proceed with this vote, there's something you all need to see. With a click of the remote, the grainy footage sprang to life, Leah's hushed conversation with the developer playing out for all to witness. Gasps and murmurs filled the room as the truth was laid bare. Leah's true motives, her betrayal, her willingness to sell out the entire community for her own personal gain. As the footage ended, I turned to face the stunned crowd, my eyes finding Leah's in the front row. Her mask had slipped, her perfectly composed facade crumbling as the weight of her lies crashed down upon her. This is what you've been dealing with, I said, my voice ringing out clear and strong. A liar? A manipulator? Someone willing to sacrifice everything we've built for her own selfish desires? Leah leapt to her feet, her face contorted with rage. How dare you? She spat, her eyes wild and unhinged. You think you can take me down with some doctored footage? You're delusional, Emily. But it was too late. The seed of doubt had been planted, and as the crowd turned on her, their voices rising in a chorus of outrage and condemnation, Leah's true nature was laid bare for all to see. In that moment, I knew we had won. Leah's reign of terror was over, her web of lies unraveled before the very community she had sought to deceive. As she stormed out of the room, her head bowed in shame and defeat, I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication, a weight lifted from my shoulders. The battle was won but the war was far from over. As Lucas and I embraced, surrounded by the cheers and well wishes of our supporters, I knew that the road ahead would be long and arduous, but with the truth on our side and the community rallied behind us, I knew that nothing could stop us from realizing our dream of a verdant urban oasis. With Leah's lies exposed and her betrayal laid bare, a weight lifted from my shoulders. The community had rallied behind me, their faith in the Urban Garden Project renewed and stronger than ever. It was time to move forward, to leave the shadows of the past behind and embrace the bright future that lay ahead. In the weeks and months that followed, the garden flourished under our care, each new bloom a testament to our resilience and determination. The once barren lot had been transformed into a verdant oasis, a sanctuary where people could escape the hustle and bustle of the city and reconnect with nature. As I walked the winding paths, my hand intertwined with Lucas's, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. This was our creation, our legacy, a living, breathing reminder that even in the most unlikely of places, beauty could take root and thrive. The community embraced the garden with open arms, organizing events and gatherings that brought people together in celebration of our shared haven. Children ran through the lush greenery, their laughter filling the air, while elders sat on benches, basking in the tranquility of their surroundings. It was during one such event, a grand festival celebrating the garden's first anniversary, that I was approached by a familiar face, Tommy Whitman, a prominent member of the community board. Emily, my dear, he said, his weathered face splitting into a warm smile. Look at what you've accomplished here. It's truly remarkable. I felt a blush creep into my cheeks at his praise still unaccustomed to the outpouring of support and admiration that had become a regular occurrence. It's been a long road, I admitted, my gaze sweeping over the vibrant blooms and lush foliage, but every step was worth it to create something like this. Tommy nodded, his eyes twinkling with pride. You know, when you first pitched this idea, I'll admit, I had my doubts, he confessed. But you've proven time and time again that your vision and dedication are second to none. He reached out, clasping my hand in his own calloused grip. The community owes you a debt of gratitude, Emily. You've given us something truly special, a sanctuary in the heart of the city. As he spoke those words, I felt a swell of emotion rise within me, a mix of gratitude and relief that my hard work had finally been recognized and appreciated. The festivities continued long into the night, a celebration of not just the garden's success, but of the resilience and perseverance that had brought us to this moment. As I mingled among the crowd, exchanging hugs and well wishes, I couldn't help but feel a sense of closure, a weight lifted from my shoulders. It was then that Lucas approached me, his eyes shining with pride and admiration. You did it, Emily, he said, pulling me into a tight embrace. You made your dream a reality. 
I nodded, my gaze drifting to a small corner of the garden, where a single sapling stood tall and proud, its delicate leaves unfurling in the gentle breeze. Not quite, I said, a warm smile spreading across my face. There's one more thing left to do. With Lucas by my side, I made my way to the sapling, a remnant of my childhood garden that had survived the trials and tribulations of my past. As I knelt before it, my fingers caressing the tender bark, I felt a sense of peace wash over me, a closure that had been years in the making. "'Ready to start planting again, Lucas?' I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. He squeezed my hand, his warmth and support enveloping me like a comforting embrace. "'With you, Emily, we can make anything grow.' And in that moment, as I placed the sapling in the rich soil of our urban oasis, I knew that the shadows of my past had finally been banished, replaced by the promise of a future as vibrant and full of life as the garden that surrounded us.